All right, so I hope this video works. Um, I'm gonna show you a few different oil pastel techniques. Some of these techniques, uh, Mr. Billy probably taught you already from what I've seen. Some of them maybe he hasn't. Um, the sheet that you're seeing now is completely blank, but I'm gonna fill it in and I'm gonna show you what I'd like to see from you. So the first um, technique is called light pressure. The second one is heavy pressure, color missing, uh, mixing, scrofito, stippling, blending with a tissue, blending with oil, and then practice for fun. Now, the two techniques that I'm not going to show you in this video are blending with oil and practice for fun. Practice for fun because you can just practice for fun there. You don't need to watch me practice for fun. And blending with oil, I will show you in class tomorrow. Um, this is optional and obviously you would probably need a parent to help you with this task of getting oil. You would want to use it in an area where um, your parents maybe don't mind you getting a little bit messy. It's like a baby oil that you can use. Um, and it will blend the pastels almost like paint. And I'll show you that tomorrow. But like I said, that one is completely optional and it would most likely involve a parent uh, handling the oil for you and assisting in an area that can get messy. <laughs> um, sorry, parents. Um, but it is fun to work with. So, you might have your own oil pastels or you might have the pastels that I gave to you in class. So you can use either or. I'm going to, for this entire project, use just the oil pastels that I gave to you so that you can see you, you really only need mine if you were going to um, use them. You don't need additional, all right? Um, okay, so the first thing that you're gonna need is a piece of paper. So I'm actually just using uh, printer paper for my printer, and but if you had paper in your sketchbook, that works too. If you need paper, um, you can see me in class and I'll give you paper. I already started giving paper to students today. Um, but you need to make eight different categories. So my suggestion would be to fold your paper in half, okay, vertically, okay. Then fold it up, in fact, I'll use this tomorrow. Okay, and then fold it again. All right, so then when I open it up, I have eight different sections. All right, once you do that, you're gonna label them. You're gonna label them light pressure, heavy, color mixing, scrofito, stippling, blending, uh, using a tissue, and then these are optional. All right, practice for fun too. Um, this will, I will have a copy of my completed work when I'm done with it um, in Google Classroom on the assignment. So you can see that as reference as well. So the first one we're gonna work with is light pressure. So light pressure just means putting less pressure on the, um, on the oil pastel. So um, what I want to see is like a light pressure blend. So let's say I wanted to blend, I don't know, like a red into an orange, okay? We're not putting a lot of pressure on the oil pastel, just minimal, okay? So when you put minimal pressure, sorry if my computer, I'll try to do this a little bit lightly. So my table is shaking and then my projector is shaking and then my video is shaking. I don't want you guys getting dizzy while I do this. Um, you're putting less pressure on the oil pastel. So you can see it creates a texture. It creates almost like a texture of the paper kind of like how a pencil might do. Well, you're blending those colors together, okay? You wanna make sure that the surface underneath is pretty clean um, so that little texture marks don't come through like you see here, okay? This 
this is my art table, so it's a little bit messy. Okay. So I'll be blending with lightly with two different colors. Okay. The next one would be doing the same, except now we're putting a lot of pressure. We're putting heavy pressure onto the um, the pastel. So now you can see the difference in what we call value, how dark or light the object is. Okay, so that would be heavy pressure, right? So you can see the difference in the intensity of the color. One is a little bit more vibrant, one's a little bit more softer. And if I were gonna really blend them together Notice that I'm picking up both colors and I'm kind of going back and forth between both. I think I need to study your table over here. Okay, so you can see that type of a blend. The next one is color mixing. So I gave you an assortment of colors to choose from, right? Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily use those specific colors. You can blend them to make other colors. Um, in this area, you can practice blending all sorts of colors. So maybe I'm gonna take like a blue and a white, and if I mix blue and white, it's gonna make like a lighter, um, a lighter blue. And let's say I wanted to make like a more salmon type of or a pinkish orangey color. I might, well, salmon's more pink, actually. Um, maybe I'll try mixing three colors. Maybe I'll try mixing these colors together. So let me try doing the blue first. I'll try to not shake the camera too much. Okay. Now if I go in with my white, shake so much. You can see that it becomes a whiter or a lighter blue. Now it does get your pastels a little bit messy so you can always just kind of scrape that off in another sheet of paper. Um, but you can keep going back in and mix a variety of colors. You can mix more than just two colors together. If I were to add yellow to it, let's see what happens. Let me try some of the camera here. Becomes more well, like a salmon. If I were to add orange to it, let's see what happens. All right, so you can really mix nicely with pastels. And you can even go back into colors. So if I wanted to add more pink, I could add more pink and so forth. So know that you can create and mix your own colors. You don't have to just use the actual colors that you have and that are given to you. All right, the next one. This is actually pretty cool and this requires a paper clip, okay? Or something that would be like sharp. So what you could do, you can use the, uh, the rounded area of the paper clip or you can actually bend and open up the paper clip and I can show you how you can use it as a tool. Um, so you can actually apply a variety of colors. So I'm gonna do two light colors together so you can see the difference. I'm sorry, I'm gonna really try not to make my camera shake. I need to do this on a different table. And then I'm going to apply I don't know, let's see, maybe red on top of it. Okay. Then I'm gonna do another one, I'm gonna do pink. Let's see, this is an experiment, so I'm gonna do both of these. And then I'm going to do navy, or this dark blue on top of it. And you can take your paper clip and actually carve away at the 
oil pastel and it creates really cool textures. So I was saying, you know, with your hidden image project, you're doing um, something that I'm not, I can't tell you what it is yet. <laughs> but some of you have really interesting textures and you can, oil pastels really work nicely um, with texture. And that's why I was saying that would be a cool material to use for your project. But look, so using colors that are contrasting to one another work a little bit nicer. So you can see it's a little bit more subtle in the top one versus the bottom one. You can see that pink coming through, right? Using the edge of the curved part of the paper clip, you're scraping away more of that area, right? So you can create cool patterns. Um, the next one is stippling, okay? So stippling would be, uh, I think Mr. Billy taught you this. It's um, for like texture. So like the texture of a, of a leaf on a tree or grass. So for this, I'm going to use my greens. I'm gonna use some greens. Maybe I'll use my brown and my black. Um, so stippling means just like a dot, but it means like a lot of dots. Now my camera's gonna really shake, all right? But it also doesn't mean just dots. It could mean like small lines, or it could mean long lines right? Um, and that would be a stipple. The thing is you want to stipple using a variety of colors versus just one, because if I was going to make just a lot of dots all together that are all brown, it's all going to blend in together and eventually just turn into the color brown. But if I were going to, let's say I wanted to make like the bark of a tree, right? Because we're doing a lot of nature right now, right? You're creating landscapes. This would be like a long textured line that could look like bark. Then maybe I'm gonna use this red, use my black. Maybe I'm gonna go in, it's a pretty red tree, but watch, I'm gonna go back in and I'm stippling over it. Kind of layering my colors um, and that would be like a uh, a textured like a longer textured stipple right I keep going over and over and over but you could also use it for you know leaves on trees or fur right so I might um, make lots of dots using my darker green and then go back in with my lighter green and also add to this, right? Because not all, when you look at things in nature, things are green and brown and all different variety of colors, but nothing, no, no tree has all the same green leaves on it. They're all, it's a variety of different greens, right? Especially even like when the light hits it, it changes a little bit. So not the actual color, when you look at it, the, the, the value of it changes. So um, you wanna add variety to all the textures that you're creating. So that would be a stipple. The last thing I'm gonna show you is um, using like a tissue or a paper towel. So, um, it, it creates like a really cool smudge effect. So if I were gonna take my blue, right, and maybe I wanted to create the idea of, I don't know, like water coming up from the ocean, right, or the mist, right? I could use the paper towel or tissue to smudge that a little bit to make it look like mist or um, I don't know fog or something like that um, smoke right so you can also put it onto the paper towel or tissue or you could put it on a separate sheet of paper like maybe have some colors off to the side using your paper towel or tissue grab and pick up some of that 
and then use the paper towel to draw, right? And that creates like really cool smoke or fog or mist or whatever it is that you're trying to create. The thing with pastels too is that it get, can get a little messy on your hands. Um, so whenever you're working, I would really try to wash your hands at times just to get certain colors off. You don't wanna use the black and then get black into your pink or yellow. And also if you use like a towel or a tissue to smudge, um, I would get a few pieces and use them for certain colors so you're not mixing uh, like the black into another color. Another thing you could do is use the paper towel. I kind of like wrap it around my finger and um, or just make like a little ball at the end. And you can really smudge and blend your um, oil pastels using that as well. All right, um, that's not really working because you know what, this the, pa the tissue that I'm using is so soft that it's like flaking off and breaking. So I would suggest like a thicker, heavier duty towel if you're going to use that. All right, so that's it for my demonstration. I'm gonna go over this tomorrow in class as well. Um, and I'm also gonna go over blending with you as well. If you have any questions, let me know. Enjoy your evening.